Hi and welcome to Weld Nerd, where today we're going to begin our discussion of AC balance by focusing specifically on aluminum oxide, since its presence is really the whole reason that we use alternating current when we're TIG welding aluminum in the first place. Um, first thing about aluminum oxide is that it is present on the exterior surface of every single piece of aluminum that you or I have ever come into contact with. If you expose aluminum to an atmosphere that has oxygen in it, that oxide layer forms. It forms instantaneously. And it has some really unfortunate characteristics that make it troublesome for us when we're trying to weld our aluminum. So number one, it's refractory. That's really just uh, an excellent Scrabble word that means that it has a very high melting temperature. So where your uh, base alloy, depending upon which alloy it is, melts somewhere between 1100 and 1250 degrees Fahrenheit, roughly, um, the oxide actually melts closer to 3800 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you think about that in terms of welding, if you put enough heat to it trying to overcome that aluminum oxide, melt that aluminum oxide, by the time you get anywhere close to it, all of that very low melting temperature base material has become a big, unmanageable, unusable puddle underneath it. So clearing it off is excellent under those circumstances. Number two, high hardness. Uh, actually on the classic Mohs scale of mineral hardness, it's uh, number two behind diamond. Uh, combine that with the fact that it's very, very common in the Earth's crust. Uh, and you'll understand why it's the most common abrasive media used in industry. So all the, most of your pedestal grinder wheels, um, four and a half inch angle grinder wheels, basically any sandpaper that isn't specifically for wood, uh, their abrasive is aluminum oxide. Might have a, a different name, but usually it's aluminum oxide. This is also why you don't want to use sanding or grinding as your principal means of oxide removal prior to welding, because you're trying to remove something by using the same thing usually you'll wind up digging it into the soft base material and making it harder to, to get out of there. Number three, it's very porous. Uh, it has a lot of pores and cavities inside of it, which in and of itself is not really a problem, but those cavities allow it to retain contaminants that we don't want anywhere near our weld pool. Um, so the number one cause of porosity in aluminum is hydrogen. It has a very, very high affinity for hydrogen. So anything with hydrogen in it, we want to keep well away from our weld area. So hydrocarbons, oils and greases, are very, very bad, but something people also don't think or don't frequently think about is water. H2O has got a lot of hydrogen in it. So the porosity inherent to aluminum oxide uh, makes it a problem because it'll hold on to that stuff. Uh, finally, it's tenacious, which is yet another good Scrabble word that just means it's really stubborn and it holds on, it doesn't let go. So this characteristic is in stark contrast to the other oxide that we're really familiar with, which is iron oxide, just general rust. See, so I got a Jeep outside, and when that thing's exposed to air, um, it rusts, and then that piece falls off, and that exposes more base material to the oxygen, which causes it to rust more and fall off. Eventually, the thing's just going to be a pile of rust in the driveway. That doesn't happen to aluminum. So when it's exposed to that oxygen, that oxide layer forms, but then it stops. It's self-limiting in its thickness, and it holds on. So it basically forms a protective layer around the aluminum itself. And that's fantastic for the aluminum, but it's not great for us if we're trying to get rid of that oxide layer. So those are the reasons we want to get rid of it. And prior to welding, best practice for getting rid of it is uh, three parts and then a process uh, uh, thing. So number one, you want to degrease. Get rid of all the hydrogen stuff in the area, all the hydrocarbons. So Something like acetone is what's used most of the time. So you use acetone uh, in a lint-free cloth, get rid of any grease that's on the surface. Number two, you're going to take something most commonly, a uh, stainless, stainless steel brush, and you're going to mechanically remove that oxide. So get rid of the oxide layer, abrade it off. Um, number three, because there may have been hydrocarbons or hydrogen in the, in the porous oxide itself, when you brush it away, you're going to repeat the degreasing process. So get that acetone, get a lint-free uh, cloth, and degrease one more time. And then the fourth thing, the thing you want to uh, you want to do is when you're TIG welding, use alternating current. And the reasons that we use alternating current, we're going to discuss a little bit more in depth uh, in video number two. So uh, stick around for part two, and thank you very much for watching. Have a wonderful day.